Okay, today we're going to look at lesson six. And our I can statement or learning objective is I can solve quadratic equations by factoring. So we're going back to factoring, but now we're going to use factoring to solve. So you've seen the quadratic equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, but now our y is going to be zero. So if we're solving for x when y equals zero, that means we're finding the x-intercepts. So if you were looking at a graph, our solutions would be the x-intercepts, okay? And those are also sometimes called roots, solutions, and zeros. So all of those terms are interchangeable, and it means the same thing. You're solving the quadratic equation for the variable. And when you're solving a quadratic equation, it has to be set equal to zero, okay? If this is not a zero, you can't solve it. Um, so we have to we have to get everything onto one side of the equal sign, then we can factor and solve. Okay, here are the steps that we're going to follow. First, we're going to set each equation equal to zero. Then we're going to factor um, the side that's not equal to zero. So, or let me say that again. We're going to factor the side that has the variables and the numbers. Then we're going to set each of those factors equal to zero and solve. Now, um, we've noticed that when we factor quadratic expressions, we often have two sets of parentheses and something out front. So each of those is a factor. So most of the time, we're going to have more than one solution or x-intercept or zero or root. Okay? Occasionally, you'll just have one, um, but most of the time, you'll have two or three. So now we'll just work on some examples. Okay. Here are, are our first three examples. So example number one, we have x squared minus 81 equals zero. It's already set equal to zero, so we can go straight to factoring. And you might notice this is one of our special cases, the difference of two squares. So I know x times x makes x squared, nine times nine makes 81. I need a negative and a positive, okay? We bring down our equal to zero. Now, we set each factor equal to zero and solve. So this is where it's a little different. We're going to have x minus 9 equals zero, and x plus 9 equals zero, and I need to solve each of those. So on this one, I'll add 9, and I get x equals 9. On this one, I'll subtract 9, and I get x equals negative 9. So those are my two solutions. And in Math Excel, I think it's going to want you to write it like this. So you can do negative 9 comma 9 or 9 comma negative 9, like that, okay? So number 2, we have x squared minus 7x. I see a GCF, so I pull out the x, and I'm left with x minus 7 equals 0. Um, there's nothing else for me to do, so I'm going to set each of them equal to zero. So x equals zero and x minus seven equals zero. This one is good to go. This one I have to solve, so add seven, get x equals seven. And again, in Math Excel, it wants you to do x equals zero comma seven. Okay. So very similar to what we've been doing, we're just adding this extra step where we set the factors equal to zero and solve. Okay x squared plus 10x plus 25. Ooh, that is one of our special cases as well because this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square, and 2 times a times 5 is 10. So x plus 5 and x plus 5 equals 0. So x plus 5 equals 0. x plus, oh, plus 5 equals 0. I subtract 5. And you'll notice here, you get x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 5. So that's what I said earlier. Occasionally, you'll get one where the answer is just one solution or one intercept, one zero. Okay, and this is one of those. So that one, you just have one solution, and it's x equals negative 5. Okay, here's number four. We have t squared minus 12t equals negative 36. That's not set equal to zero, so I'm going to have to move this negative 36 to the other side. So that changes to t squared minus 12t plus 36 equals zero. 
Now, this is another one of our special cases. So we have perfect squares. The square root of 36 is 6, so 2 times 1 times 6 is 12. So this is a special case, quadratic. So I can do t minus 6 and t minus 6 equals 0. So it's going to work out very similar to this one. We set each of those equal to 0. Get t equals 6 and t equals 6. And so your final answer is just t equals 6. Okay, here's number 5. We have 5x squared equals 45x. We can't do anything with it yet. We have to set it equal to 0, so we're going to move that to the other side. 5x squared minus 45x equals 0. We factor out the GCF, so we bring out a 5x, and that's, that leaves us with x minus 9 equals 0. Set each of those factors equal to 0. 5x equals 0, x minus 9 equals 0, and solve. Divide both sides by 5. We get x equals 0. Add 9 to both sides, and we get x equals 9. And again, in Math Excel, I want you to put both numbers separated with a comma. Okay, here are examples 6 and 7. I want you to take just a second, write these down, and give them a try. Factor them, set those factors equal to 0, and solve. Okay, let's see how you did. So for this one, we don't have a GCF. It's not a special case. So we need factors of 6 that add up to give me 5. So 1 and 6, 2 and 3. I can use 2 and 3. So I'm going to have n plus 2 and n plus 3. n plus 2 equals 0. n plus 3 equals 0. Solve this one and get n equals negative 2. Solve this one and get n equals negative 3. Again, in Math Excel, you'll put the numbers together separated by a comma. Okay, number seven. This one is not set equal to zero. We have to get this 36 to the other side, so we will subtract it. 81 minus 36 is 45. So we have x squared plus 18x plus 45. So we need factors of 45 that add up to give us 18. That's going to be x plus 15 and x plus 3. Set each of those equal to 0 and solve. And what you might notice is when you set it equal to 0, it's the opposite of what it looks like. Okay, so it's a plus 15 here. Well, the solution is negative 15. It's a positive 3 here. The solution is negative 3. So that could be a little shortcut that will help you skip this step of solving those little one-step equations, or you can solve those in your head, and that's fine, and you'll still get the same answer. Okay, here's example number 8. Um, give it a try. See what you can get. Okay, let's check it. First, we have to get it set equal to 0, so we need to move, get all this moved to the other side of the equal sign. So x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. We need to factor that. Um, factors of negative 15 that will add and give me negative 2. I think that's going to be negative 5 and positive 3. Set those equal to 0. Get x equals 5. And x equals negative 3. And then our last example, number 9, sorry, I got my numbers out of whack. I wrote the wrong one over here and had to fix it. All right, so number 9. Okay, number 9, we have 3x times the quantity x minus 3 equals 5x squared minus 10x. So for this one, we are going to simplify, then get everything on one side. So first, I'm going to distribute this 3x, and that gives me 3x squared minus 9x. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring these other two things to the other side of the equal sign. So that's minus 5x squared plus 10x equals 0. I have 3x squared minus 5x squared is negative 2x squared. 
I have negative 9x plus 10x is just an x. I can factor out a GCF of negative x, and that leaves me with 2x plus, or minus 1, sorry. That equals 0. And um, you can set each one equal to 0. Negative x equals 0. It's just x equals 0. 2x minus 1 equals 0. You can add 1. And then we have 2x equals 1. Divide by 2. And you get x equals 1 half. Now, some of your problems in Math Excel are going to ask you for just the factored form. I guess I should box these in. So if it asks you for factored form, this is what it wants. So you can make a little note. This is factored form. This is factored form. <clears throat> this is factored form. So that last step before you break it apart and set it equal to zero is the factored form. So pay attention to what Math Excel is asking you if it wants the factored form, if it's still got the e if it gives you the equal zero, it's wanting the set in parentheses. Okay? But if it's asking for the solutions or it's telling you to solve, then it's wanting your two numerical answers. Okay? Um, as always, if you have any questions, you're welcome to hop back on the meet, send me an email, or hit the Ask My Instructor button. Um, I'd be happy to help you with whatever you need. Um, but use this to help you with your math Excel work, and have a great day.